in today's show, Better Days Ahead, a confident Matthew Nix. And how players stay on during the off season. Hi, I'm Mark Pickley and welcome to The Crow Show, brought to you by the new Pop and Chicken Carry Cup, only $3.95 at Hungry Jack's. It's our last show of 2022 and we're coming to you from the Phil Ridings Bar at Adelaide Oval. Also joining us, Belinda Sloan. Lots of people can't imagine getting through the day without a cup of their favourite coffee. But one Crows player has turned their love of a good brew into a delicious hobby. We'll have that story a little later, Bix. Thanks, Belinda. Well, when the Crows season wraps up in a few hours, we'll all reflect on how results could no doubt have been better, but how no one could question the players' attitude and commitment. The form of players like Sam Berry, Jake Saligo and Darcy Fogarty is among many positives and underscores why the future is definitely bright. So how does Matthew Nix assess the season and the prospects for next year? When you look at 2022 and um, yeah, we get asked to put a grade on it, I think it's more about the development we've seen across the board. We've now got a squad that are performing really well at both levels. Our SNFL team are, are fighting it out, they'll play finals. Our AFL team have been in majority of the games they've played in and had our opportunities. Haven't necessarily got all the results we're after, but the way we're finishing this season off shows the form that we're going to take into 2023. Feed the handball through and here's the milestone man for the Crows getting on the board early. Goes again, Schomburg, and he might do it on his own this time. This will be a wonderful individual effort. Schomburg from 45. The cohesion of our group has probably been the standout, and you start to see things work. I think we almost take them for granted after a while that, you know, Ned McHenry kicking to Darcy Fogarty on the weekend, it just happens. Well, that, that's, that's games and games playing together, um, and it takes time for that to develop. That's just one example of many that we're starting to see. We, you know, Jordan Butts playing alongside of Nick Murray. But we're, we're confident that the development we're seeing this year is going to continue into next year. Fogarty brushes them aside. Takes on Kerra. Takes the line of the ball. Oh, don't you want to get him? There are some real standouts without being disrespectful to some of the others who have had you know, some development there. Darcy Fogarty would be one that, to his credit, he's done a lot of work on his game, worked on the way he uh, operates off field. You know, he's an ultimate pro now, uh, a leader of our footy club and hopefully a, a really strong leader going into the future. But his form towards the end of this year really is reward for the work he's done throughout the year. Sam Berry is one that um, I'd say some are surprised about the form he's, he's found, but not those from within. Yeah, he does a lot of hard work, you know, he's a, a really tough player inside and he's added now some leg drive. Um, he's also learned a lot from a number of his teammates, especially Rory Laird and Ben Keyes on the way they go about it. And there's a lot of things that we still need to improve on. One of the biggest ones is our consistency and that's, I'm not talking purely on field. Uh, some of that's off field, some of that's from our coaching point of view and making sure we keep the message um, you know, clean because when we give our players clarity they, they do play at the level. We'll do work on that, we'll continue to work with our players around the consistency of performance, um, you know, that we don't drop away in games for a quarter or for, uh, for a half. Um, if we are able to do that and get our consistency to the right level, well, I've got no doubt that we'll be, you know, we'll be fighting up there with some of the best teams in the competition. Oh, my message would be firstly thank you for, for all the support they've given us throughout this year. Our uh, home ground advantage has been huge. Um, you know, we love the support that we get at home games. You know, we've worked our way through those tough times and now it's, it's time to enjoy and, and be rewarded because our young group are going to continue to improve. And the Crows are going to make it three in a row. A strong final month should give the players enormous confidence to attack the pre-season. Now, did you know Crows members get exclusive access to a wealth of content on afc.com.au? Head to the Crows website and click the exclusive tab for member-only articles, videos and photo galleries. Stay with us after the break. Belinda takes a coffee break with Anne Hatchard.
It's no secret that Crows midfielder Anne Hatchard is pretty talented with a football, but she's also perfected how to pour a delicious cup of coffee. And it's a passion that's led to a pretty exciting side project. So tell me how you brought the idea of Hatchie's coffee van to life. Yeah, so pretty much my partner Georgie and I were just in lockdown. Um, we're thinking about what we could do and we found this coffee trailer on Marketplace. So uh, we just went for it, bought it. How has the business been going so far? Yeah, so it's slow starting at the moment. You know, through footy and COVID, we couldn't go out there and do as much as we, we wanted to. And with the season coming forward again, um, not really having too much time, but we're keen to get it um, running up again and we'll have it at a few of our home games, which is really exciting. Oh. So, yeah, Georgie will be in there working, uh, trying to watch me play at the same time. You won't so. be, like, running in at half-time, like, doing a coffee, going back out. Yeah, I was thinking I could maybe get a few in. So, um, yeah, super excited to, to have Hatch Coffee Co. at the game. Today we're at Pogo Coffee in the city, and I believe that you learnt the tricks of the trade here. Yep, so I, I did work here about six months ago, so my boss Fraser, he's been an absolute legend, he knows everything about coffee, so he taught me, he taught me well and hopefully I can make some good coffees for people out there. What's the secret to making the perfect cup of coffee? Yeah. The secret's a secret, you've got to oh, keep that one to oh, yourself. <laughs> come inboard, Guthridge but Hatchard. Hatchard leans on the kick and shapes it through. It's been a really big year for you already. Not only are you about to start your second AFLW season for the year, but you also got engaged and bought a house and most importantly won a premiership. How's the whirlwind of a year been for you? A crazy year, everything's just all happening at once, so it feels like it's all just falling into place and then footy starting again, I just absolutely love playing, so to have two seasons in one year, it's a bit hard on the body, but nah, super excited to get out there with the girls and get started. The club has managed to retain most of the players on the list leading into the second season. Do you think that says something about the club's culture? Oh, for sure. We've built such a great culture together and to see only a few girls leave, is, it just shows how tight we are as a group and we're just there for each other. So everyone wants to be part of the Crows because we've got such an exciting program and everyone wants to be a part of it. All the best for season seven, Hatchie, and thanks so much for having coffee with us this morning. No worries. Thanks so much, Belle. And Vix, what's your favourite coffee? Well, Belinda, I'm a pretty uncomplicated guy, so a flat white normally gets it done. Of course, Anne and her teammates kick off their premiership defence in the grand final rematch against Melbourne on Friday, August the 26th at 7 o'clock. You can become a member for as little as $25 and get ready for two in 2022. Join at crowsmembership.com.au. Now, every week this year, Tom Duday has helped us recall a favourite Crows memory through the eyes of a player. Today's Hungry Jack's Whopper moment is a highlight from almost exactly 12 months ago. All right, we're here for another Crows Whopper moment, uh, joined by Fisher Mackesy. How are you, Big Fish? Good, mate. How are you? Fingers. I'm good, mate. I'm good. Very excited to have you here. Um, talk me through your Whopper moment. My Whopper moment is Shane McAdams' mark against North Melbourne. I think it was around 23 last year. He got up super high and it's just an awesome mark. And this one, a real test. There's Mark Rusciuto prescribed to McAdam. Puts in his candidate for mark of the year in the final game season. Oh, oh. The number 23, they are uh, historically great jumpers at this club and uh, these two boys have done them justice. <laughs> that is a great grab. It was a big grab, um, I do remember that one. You were watching the game obviously, were you with a few of the boys, was the reaction loud and, and up and about or were you sort of just gobsmacked at how high you got? Oh there's a bit of atmosphere up in the up in the box with the boys, yeah it was great, um, yeah it was an awesome mark. All right. Perfect, mate. Thank you for joining us uh, and telling us about your Crows Whopper moment. Thanks for having me, mate. The game certainly needs its high flyers. Well, the players will soon head off for their end of season break. But how do they keep in shape? We'll find out next. Welcome back. After today, players begin to wind down. 
There'll be end of season performance reviews before they head off for some well-earned R&R. But how do they and the club ensure that fitness levels don't decline? With the help of Dr Jones and partners, let's get a clearer picture of what's expected of the players. The guys who uh, aren't qualified to play Sandville will do two or three days of reviews with coaches and uh, doctors and physios, so they'll undergo a medical review, performance review, and then they'll be given their program for, for the off-season. And then basically from Wednesday, uh, they're, they're away on their off-season break. Everyone has an individual program. Um, we make sure that it's tailored to their needs, both from a positional point of view, an age point of view, injury history, and even from where they're actually going in the off-season. If some guys are going overseas, we'll tailor it for that. Depending on the, on the player, they'll run between two to four times a week. Um, we'll certainly give them a few weeks off. It's been a pretty demanding season for our guys. Their outputs have been extraordinary, so we'll give them a few weeks off and then they, they start to move into a, a three to four day a week running and gym program. Yeah, it's certainly up to them. Um, but what these guys have demonstrated over the last couple of years, according to the staff that have been here, is that their, their ability to work in off-season is really, really strong. Uh, probably this is the first off-season where they can travel um, in, a, in a couple of years, so most of them are taking advantage of that in one way or another, So, which we really encourage because it's important for them to, to relax mentally um, as well as physically. So uh, there are some challenges, but, um, but I have complete faith in the group. We obviously hope the sample guys go all the way um, and their programs will be adjusted accordingly. So uh, some of the younger guys as well as the older guys, um, they'll have a few more weeks off depending on how far, how far we progress. Boys can expect uh, obviously a hard first week but also uh, a lot of footy. We really want to uh, encourage the guys to get all their running and their fitness done in the off season so that when we come back we can, we can practice kicking and catching and moving the ball and all the things that we want to we really uh, improve on for next season. Toyota and the Crows are enthusiastic partners in many community projects and National Tree Day is one of the most important. The campaign promotes the planting of trees across the country and underpins Toyota's operational goal to achieve zero carbon emissions by 2050. We join Crows players on one of their delivery days. Here we are at Kilkenny Primary School partnering with Toyota. It's National Tree Day and we're going to be giving the kids some tree planting kits. We celebrated National Tree Day. We spent a lot of the day and we'll spend a lot of the month planting trees across our school. The kids at Kilkenny Primary School are really enthusiastic about their outdoors. They've implemented a veggie garden which looks very well maintained and they have an outdoor area where they can explore and have fun during recess and lunch. So we have a kitchen garden program here at school so students are involved in classes in the garden and then they're using the produce from our gardens in the kitchen um, to show that uh, we can take the, the food from the garden into the kitchen and cook it and have some fresh, fresh produce to eat. We've got a magnificent grounds here with uh, lots of scrub and lots of trees and beautiful gardens so um, we just teach the importance of looking after the environment for years to come. With Toyota Tree Day uh, it's great that we can get out to schools and, and help with this program. And it's important for both schools and obviously the Adelaide Footy Club as well. certainly a very worthy project. Now, the club is always looking to forge closer links between past and present players. We'll look at the latest initiative shortly. As the Crows Sandful team enjoys much more success, players are being reminded of Adelaide's historic links to the league clubs. Each week, a Crows past player who's represented the opposition club presents the side's best on ground award. I've been delighted to be involved along with others, including Nigel Smart and Chris McDermott. With the help of Bendigo Bank, we accompanied Stephen Swert as he joined in. 
Hey boys, um, I, I, uh, I see you guys in our gym. You know, I work for the SACA, so you guys come in and I actually got to catch up with Rory yesterday and I had a good chat to him. And in those days, they used to go back and play in the SANFL club. So, Slightly got drafted to the Crows and then he gets allocated to North Adelaide in the SANFL. The, the point I'm trying to make, boys, is how lucky you are now to have your own team. Okay, you don't need to go back to other clubs, you know, boys who come from the state. You've got, you've got an identity. Ends up in the hands of Zach Taylor, who turns around on the right boot, curls at home. He's celebrating before it even gone over the umpire's head. Well, it's been well documented uh, the how young our AFL list is. So we took it upon ourselves this year to put a real off-field focus on the development of the players and their understanding of the sample. Each week, we bring in a past player of the sample team we're playing against and ask them to talk about their journey in their, um, at their sample club and how they got to then eventually playing at the Adelaide Footy Club. And it's been really well received. The players and coaches have loved it. The past players have had that connection back to the club. So it's been a really positive experience. I think it's a, a bit of gratitude in that the, the, the work that the club, the SANFL has done to get their own team, their own SANFL Crows team is really important. You know, I was watching the game tonight and the thing I also mentioned to the boys was the, the, you know, the, the real care they had for each other out in the field. You could tell they were operating as a team. And you know, that's, a, that's a great asset to have when you're trying to Develop players to play at the next level. I think the way you guys play today, I love the, I love the energy, the intensity. I love that third quarter. Well done on so far. Good luck for the rest of the year, and um, thanks for having me down. So it started uh, in round one, uh, we got Simon Dragenza, we played Port Adelaide at Adelaide Oval. Straight away there was a huge amount of connections and the, and the players really bought into the award. We've had Mark Bickley when we've played at South Adelaide, we've had Jason Paul Pleasia at West Adelaide and we go right through to our home, end of our home and away series. This week's uh, Triple S player, Lockie Glant. The opportunity to be back involved with the club at Sample level has been really appreciated by the past players. Time now for our crow in the crowd. Someone who's posted their photo on social media and used the hashtag WeFlyersOne. We've been overwhelmed with entries all year and for our lucky last in 2022, we've chosen you. Please email faceinthecrowd at afc.com.au to claim your prize of two tickets to Toyota's exclusive Hilux Hill at Adelaide Oval. Now, Thanks to Flight Centre, Matthew Nix has found time each week to answer a fan's question. And they've come from all over Australia, as well as a few from overseas. This time, David from Adelaide wants to know if the club is looking to bolster the ruck and defence during the draft and trade periods. Oh, thanks, David, for your question around the draft this year. You know, what is it we're actually going to look to bolster? Um, look, there's a lot of areas. We, we have a look at the draft, we look at the crop that's coming through. Um, you know, where's the talent at? Where's our pick at? So there's a fair bit still to go through with that as the year plays out. But um, you know, we're always looking to improve our group, both you know, in, in all areas, whether that be key backs, um, whether we're, we're looking at key forwards or, or midfielders. Um, I think when, you, when you're talking draft, depending on where that pick comes in, uh, early picks in the draft, you often find some of the best midfielders around. I think we'd continue, we'd like to continue to add to that part of our group. Well, that just about wraps up the Crow Show for another year. Don't forget to check out at the Crow Show on Twitter for all the latest news. Also, our social media accounts: Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Together with Belinda Sloan, we thank you for watching this year and look forward to your company again in 2023. Finally, make sure you get behind our AFLW side as they look to defend their premiership. Bye for now.